the cat who wanted to be a monkey. Hello, this is Jana, and I'm here with two of our popular monkey stories. If you've heard any of them before, you will know that they are small, cheeky, and sweet, just like monkeys. And just in case you are waiting for the Ramayana, we'll be back soon with our epic serial. The first of our stories is called "The Cat Who Wanted to Be a Monkey." Once upon a time, Mother Bushcat, Father Bushcat, and Baby Bushcat were watching the monkey playing. They saw how he drank flower nectar, ate fruit, picked fleas from his friend's fur, and swung through the trees, shrieking and chattering. Indeed, he was a very noisy monkey and best known for his naughty tricks. It's all right for some," said Mother Bushcat, after picking up Baby Bushcat for the fifteenth time that day, and putting him back in their den. Yes, monkeys lead a very easy life," said Father Bushcat as he stretched and yawned. And then Baby Bushcat piped up, "Mummy." Can I be a monkey some day when I grow up? Mother Bushcat laughed and said, "Oh, how you wish you were a monkey! But no, dear, you were born a bushcat, and you will always be a bushcat. That's the law of the jungle." Meow! Oh, that's not fair! Meow! Protested Baby Bushcat. I'm sure the monkeys would really like me to join them. If I ask them nicely, Brrr. well, you can try, dear, and see what happens," said Mother Bushcat, who was sure that her baby would soon forget about his idea to become a monkey. But Baby Bushcat did not forget his ambition to become a monkey, and as soon as he was old enough to prowl out and about on his own, under strict instructions not to stray far, and to come back before dark. He set out to find the place where the monkeys were playing. Sure enough, he soon found a monkey sitting with his back to a banana tree. Meow, Mister Monkey, I'm Baby Bushcat. Pleased to meet you. Likewise, Baby Bushcat," said the monkey as he peeled a banana. I've seen you play, meow, and I'd like to be a monkey too. If I can, please," said Baby Bushcat. "Well, now, it's no easy matter for the Baby Bushcat to grow up into a monkey," said the monkey. "No, please let me be a monkey, please. I really, really want to be a monkey, and I'll never forget you if you help me. And I'll always pick your fleas whenever you ask me." All right then," said the monkey. "We monkeys like enthusiasm. If you really want to be a monkey first, you must learn to scratch my back. I've got an itch just in the middle, but mind you are not too sharp with your claws." Baby Bushcat scratched the monkey's back, and the monkey said, "Ah,、oh, that's just right." Meow! Great! Can I be a monkey now? Hold on, hold on, not just yet. Next, you must learn to harvest the bananas. Climb up into that tree, and get me a few. Right away, the cat sprung up into the tree and cut down six bananas with his claw. And then he jumped down onto the forest floor and said. Done it! I've cut down some bananas. Now can I be a monkey? Meow! Please, please! Hold on, hold on! Not just yet. We've got to sort out that tail of yours first. Meow! What's wrong with my tail? I've got a good tail, haven't I? Yeah, it's okay tail for a baby bush cat, but it isn't long enough for a monkey. So what can I do? Hold on.
down a minute. I'll help you, replied the monkey, who got up and began to pull Baby Bushcat's tail. Meow! Ooh, that hurts! Meow! said Baby Bushcat. Is it long enough yet? Mm, not yet, but I'll tell you what. I'll just tie your tail to this branch, and that will do the trick. Meow! Tie my tail to a branch? I don't want you to tie my tail to a branch. Please, meow! Please don't do that. Hold on a minute. I thought you said you wanted me to help you to become a monkey. Meow! I did. Well then. Just let me tie your tail to this branch, and before too long, you'll be one. Brrr, all right then. I suppose if you have to. And so the baby bush cat let the monkey tie his tail to a branch of the banana tree. The monkey used some vines to tie him by a strong monkey knot, and then stood back to admire baby bush cat, who was now swinging upside down from the branch, almost like monkeys do. Be a monkey, please," Baby Bushcat asked as he swung there by his tail. "Aha! I monkey tricked you!" called out the monkey as he flew off through the trees, laughing to himself at the wonderful trick he had played on the baby Bushcat, who was now left meowing and crying for his mummy. To tell you the truth, it was a very mean trick of the monkey to play on the baby Bushcat. Now Baby Bushcat's tail was really starting to hurt, and he started to sob. Meow, meow! I don't want my mummy. Meow, meow, meow! I don't want to be a monkey anymore. Boom, meow! Eventually, Mother Bushcat came out to find him, and she bit through the vines and let him down. Who tied your tail to that branch? She asked. And Baby Bushcat sobbed. The monkey, meow! The monkey did it. Do you still want to be a monkey? No, I don't. Because monkeys play mean tricks. Meow! Well, you've learnt a very good lesson today," said Mother Bushcat. And from that day on, Baby Bushcat wanted to grow up to be a bushcat, just like Father Bushcat. Which he did, and when he had his own babies, he told them to watch the monkeys and laugh at them, and never ever try to be one. And that was the story of the cat who wanted to be a monkey. In a moment, I'm going to tell you another monkey story. This one's called the monkey who wanted to fly. But first, let's hear from this week's sponsor, Wondery. Grown-ups, if your kids asked you how fast a peregrine falcon can fly, would you know the answer? Ten miles per hour, maybe twenty-five, fifty. Well, in fact, the correct answer is two hundred miles per hour. I know this because we've been listening to Flip and Mosey's guide to how to be an Earthling. Flip and Mosey are exploring Earth. And meeting animals from all around the world. One of our favourite travel pods from last season was when Flip and Mosey went swimming in the very chilly Arctic Ocean to meet a two hundred and fifty-year-old bowhead whale. But she's not as old as Mosey, who is turning nine hundred years old. Flip and Mosey's guide features songs the whole family will love, written and composed by the Pop Ups. Three-time Grammy-nominated children's artists. This holiday, taking an adventure is as simple as pressing play on an episode of Flip and Mosey's Guide to How to Be an Earthling. Listen to new episodes of How to Be an Earthling on Thursdays, wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen early and ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. And now. On with our next story, which is called "The Monkey Who Wanted to Fly." Now, as you know, 
the monkey was always playing tricks on the other animals. I've already told you about the time that he tied Baby Bushcat to a tree by his tail, and he was always catching the other animals by surprise, making them jump with a sudden shriek, or sneaking up when they were asleep, and pulling their noses. He thought that his tricks were very, very funny, but the other animals found him very, very annoying. And the biggest and proudest beast, like the bear, the tiger, and the eagle, were most annoyed with him of all. <coughs> said the bear. Well, I wish I could bear punch him, but he's too fast and he always dodges. <coughs> said the tiger. I wish I could bite his cheeky head off, but he won't hang around long enough for me to eat him. And then the eagle, who was the king of the birds, said, "Wah wah! I'd like to pick him up by the scruff of his neck, fly high into the sky, and drop him into the ocean." Mmm! What a delightful idea! Purred the tiger. Oh, "I like the way you think," said the bear. "Why don't you do it? It will be a service to animal kind." I would," said the eagle. "But he hides in the trees, where the branches are too thick for me to swoop down and catch him." And the bear, the tiger, and the eagle grumbled amongst themselves that nobody would ever catch that monkey, and he would carry on playing annoying tricks until the end of time. Now a little mouse happened to be listening to the conversation of the three big beasts, and he squeaked up. Excuse me, sirs, if you don't mind me suggesting, but if you want to catch a trickster, you have to play a trick. Oh, oh that's right. He's got a point there," said the bear.、Mm, "But what trick can we play?" asked the tiger. "Remember, he knows all the tricks because he's playing them already," said the eagle. "I know. I have an idea," said the mouse. And he told them his plan, which the three big beasts thought was a super smart idea, and ordered the other animals and birds to put into action. The eagle announced that for one day only, he was willing to take any animal who wanted up into the air for free to experience what it felt like to fly, and he promised not to eat them. Normally, none of the other animals would have agreed to try anything like that. Because the idea of flying can be very frightening, unless you are a bird, of course. But the bear and the tiger ordered the smaller animals, including the gerbil and the tortoise and the bush cat, to queue up and wait for their turn to go flying. As promised, the eagle picked each one of them up, soared into the air, and returned them safely to the ground. The smaller animals reported that flying was a bit sick-making. But very thrilling, and they were so happy to be alive when they returned that they did a little dance and told everyone else that they should try it too. Now the monkey saw the animals go up into the air and return safely, and eventually he could not resist the opportunity to experience what it was like to fly. So he stepped forward and said, "Can I have a go?" Well done, monkey. That's a good fellow," roared the tiger. "That will be a thrill of a lifetime. I wish I could go up, but I'm too heavy to fly. Now you're just the right size, and you'll love it." And then the monkey clung for dear life to the eagle's legs as the bird's great wings soared across the warm air currents, over the tops of the trees, and out above the waves of the ocean. I feel sick. Can we go back now, please? Asked the monkey. Wow! Switch you! Called back the eagle, who started to swoop this way and that until the monkey was so dizzy he would not hold on any more, and he fell down into the sea as the eagle called out. Bombs away! Now that would have been the end of the monkey, but it so happened that a fisherman caught the monkey in his net. And hauled him on board. The monkey was the strangest fish he had ever seen, and the monkey soon shot up 
to the top of the boat's mast, where he sat above the sail like a lookout, until they reached the shoreline where he hopped into the branches of a nearby tree. The eagle returned to the spot where he had left the other animals and declared, Mission accomplished! I dropped the cargo into the ocean waves. The monkey has tripped his last. But no sooner had he spoken than the monkey called out from a nearby tree. Ha ha! Tricked you! And the three big beasts jumped into the air with shock. Thanks for taking me flying, called out the monkey. I didn't ask to go swimming, but that was fun too. <laughs> See you soon for another funny trick. <laughs> growled the tiger at the eagle. Mission accomplished, you said. Total failure, more like. And the eagle saw how angry the tiger and the bear were and decided to fly back to his nest on top of a craggy mountain. And that was the story of the monkey who wanted to fly. I do hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back soon with another episode of the Ramayana here at storynori.com. For now, from me, Jana, see you soon.